So you've bought a Mac and suddenly you realize one big problem. You keep running out of storage. Apple's internal solid state drives are insanely expensive. And the worst part is you can't upgrade them later. But here's the good news. You can use external SSDs for apps and games. And in this video, I'll show you how to set up your own solid state drive Thunderbolt 5 enclosure, how to format it and how to install games directly to it, whether they are Mac native games or Windows games running through crossover or parallels. And I'll be talking about why this is the best solution for Mac gaming. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by WowCube. Now this device looks absolutely incredible. At first glance, it looks like a Rubik's Cube, but every square is actually a screen. 24 screens, in fact, across eight modules, all connected and working together. What makes it interesting is the way that you interact with it. Instead of tapping like you would on a flat phone screen, you twist it, tilt it, and shake it, and the cube reacts instantly. There are puzzle games, brain teasers, arcade-style challenges, and even widgets, like using it as a timer or a night lamp. And because it's an open platform, developers can actually create and publish new apps for it, and you can add your own content too. It's not trying to replace a console or a phone, it's its own category, a mix of physical and digital that feels different and a little futuristic when you see it in motion. It's been featured by Time, CES and Wired, so it's definitely caught the attention of the tech world. So if you're into unique gadgets and new interfaces, this one is worth checking out. So make sure to click the link at the top of this video's description so that you can join the waitlist to buy the Wild Cube in time for Christmas. Anyway, big thanks to Wildcube for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the main content. So let's quickly explain how we got here. Take the M4 Mac Mini as an example. At $599, it's a fantastic machine, but it only comes with 256 gigabytes of storage. That's tiny. Just the game Assassin's Creed Shadows uses a whopping 136 gigabytes of storage space. That's more than half of most base Mac configurations. And if you want to upgrade to one terabyte from Apple, well, that's gonna cost you $400 extra. Two terabytes, $800. It's a total ripoff. That's why external solid state drives are the solution. They're cheaper, upgradable, and surprisingly fast and perfect for gaming as well. One of the best options right now is the Acasis TB501 Pro Thunderbolt 5 enclosure. It supports up to 80 gigabit per second transfer speeds, it's future proof, and it's completely toolless. Pair this with a high performance solid state drive like the Samsung 990 Pro NVMe and you're all set. And this combination of high end storage actually ends up being less than 400 US dollars at the time of recording. And it's starting to look a lot better than what Apple is charging, which is $800 for two terabytes. And it's not even that hard to set up yourself. Installation is ridiculously easy. All you have to do is take the Acasis T501 Pro out of its box and then you can remove the top cover with your fingers. Then you take your NVMe drive. So here I've got my Samsung 990 Pro and then you line up the notches and then simply insert Insert the drive into the correct place. It will stick up a little bit, but we're going to secure it with the thumb screw, which is included in the box. So just go ahead and clip this onto the edge of the back of the SSD. Then you can push it down into the secure hole, and then that's all ready to go. So another thing that you can do is you can optionally attach these thermal pads, which are included in the box. This will help with thermal performance of the solid state drive, especially if you're doing a lot of reading and writing to it. All you need to do here is to peel off the sticker on the back. So just be careful of this because this is very sticky. Then we're gonna go ahead and lay it on top of the solid state drive, making sure everything's patted down and safe and secure. And then we take the back film off. Basically the thermal pad is kind of adhesive between the solid state drive and the outer aluminum case, which is really gonna help with thermal performance. And then all you need to do is take your Thunderbolt 5 cable which comes with the case and then go ahead and plug it into your Mac. Now technically only the M3 Ultra Mac Studio and the M4 Pro chips and above actually support the faster Thunderbolt 5 standard. Any Apple Silicon that's older or lower powered is likely to be using Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 3. And even if you have say a base M4 MacBook Air, which only has a Thunderbolt 4 port, the drive will still operate at the maximum Thunderbolt 4 speed, which is actually still really fast. So once you've plugged in the Acasis drive, click on the spotlight icon on the top right and do a search for disk utility. And then once this is open, click on the icon on the top and click show all devices. Then you can select the Samsung SSD 990 Pro or any SSD you have installed. Then we need to format this for macOS. So I'm gonna give it a sensible name. I'm gonna call it my Acasis 2 terabyte 990 Pro. And the important part here is that you want this formatted as APFS. This is Apple's native file system, which is gonna provide the best compatibility and speed. So at this stage, you're free to press the erase button and then we can move on to the next step. So now the formatted drive is gonna appear on the top right hand side of your desktop, or you'll also see the drive on Finder on the left hand sidebar under locations. So first things, first. Let's start with the Mac App Store. 
So in order to configure App Store games to download to the external drive, just open up the App Store, click on the menu bar item, and then go to settings. And then you have the option here to download and install large apps to a separate disk. So click on this and then choose disk. And then we're going to choose the disk that we've just formatted with the name that we've already given it. And then the next time we download any game, it's going to automatically download to the applications folder of our drive. So for example, here I'm downloading Monkey Island and it's automatically going into the external drive here. Similarly, we can also download games to Steam on Mac OS. So once we have the Mac version of Steam open, just click on the menu bar here, then go to preferences. And then in the storage tab here on the sidebar, we can click on this item here and it allows us to add additional drives. So click on add drive here, and then we're going to allow Steam to look at removable devices, click allow. And now it's detected that I've got my Acasis 2 terabyte drive here. We can just go ahead and add it to this volume. And then if I look at my Acasis 2 TB, you can see that it's added a Steam library folder here. So this means that any game that I download now has the option to download there. So let's say, for example, I want to download the game Dota 2. I'll click the install button here. And now we have two options. We can download it to Macintosh HD, which is the internal solid state drive, or the external drive here. And within the storage options, if you wanted to, you can make this the default location. Just click on the three dots here and then click Make Default. And the next time you install a game, it's going to default directly to this drive here. And then all your games are going to download onto that drive. So I press Install here. You can see that the Steam Library folder is now populating. Dota 2 has started to download here. Next, if we want to get this working on something like crossover. So the way that I normally do this is that I open up the Acasis drive and finder, and I'm going to control click on a blank space, click new folder. I'm going to make a new folder called Steam Windows. So this way we can separate the two Steam libraries so they don't get confused. And then what I can do here is go into crossover, and I'm going to open up Steam within the Steam bottle that we've created before. And then within Steam, and then within the Windows version of Steam, we can click on the Steam icon here, go to settings, and then go to storage. And then we can click on this drop down and then click on Add Drive. Click on this drop down menu here and then click, let me choose another location, then click Add. And then I can go to this forward slash button here, then double click on volumes. And this shows all of the mounted volumes on our Mac. And this includes the Acasis 2 terabyte 990 Pro. And then we're going to double click on Steam Windows and then click Open. And then it's going to create that library there. So this is going to mount it under the D drive. And here we're going to make default again. And when I install a game, so let's uh, install something like Elden Ring. I'm going to click the Install button here, and it's going to automatically go install it on the D drive. Press Accept, and it start the download process. I can double check this by going to Steam Windows, Steam Apps, Common, and it's downloading Elden Ring straight onto the external drive. Another alternative way of doing this is also going through the crossover bottle. So we're going to select our Steam bottle here, go to Wine Configuration. And then within the Drives tab here, you can go ahead and add a drive. We can add any letter. And then if we select our letter here, we can browse and then we can add the mounted drive here through the same way, go to volumes and then select our external solid state drive, press OK. And then the wine bottle will see everything that's mounted onto the D drive as something that's mounted and recognized by Windows applications run through the crossover bottle. And if you're running Windows 11 ARM in a parallels virtual machine, then what you'll find is that every single drive that's been mounted on the Mac OS side is going to be reflected on this PC under Explorer. So if here, for example, this has been mapped as a network drive under the W letter, under the letter W. So double click on this and you'll see everything that's mounted on the Mac OS side. And if you want to add this on your Windows Steam, you can just go to settings and then just go to storage. And then you can go ahead, click add drive. And then we can go ahead and let me choose another location. And we can scroll down, go to this PC, go to the W drive. And then we can even go ahead and use the same Steam Windows installation that we used earlier for crossover. Press select folder. And then all of the games that have been added here are going to be added onto your Windows Steam library under Windows 11 ARM on Parallels. Now let's talk about speed. Using a Morpheus disk mark, my Acacia's Thunderbolt 5 enclosure with the Samsung 990 Pro actually matches, or in some cases beats, the internal solid state drive speeds of my Mac Studio. That means that loading up files and games from the external solid state drive is virtually the same as the internal solid state drive, sometimes even faster. And that's why Thunderbolt 5 enclosures like this are such a game changer. Now the next question is, do you actually need a fast solid state drive in order to run games on a Mac? The fact is that most games don't necessarily benefit from that very fast speed. After all, for years I've been running games off an SD card on my Steam Deck and it's all worked perfectly fine. However, as games get bigger and bigger, transfer speeds matter more and more, especially when you're verifying or patching a game on a Mac. And if the storage can perform faster, then you'll be able to get back into your game even quicker. And even if you're not taking advantage of Thunderbolt 5 speeds right now, there's no harm in future proofing this kind of external storage. So there you go. One of the biggest problems with Mac gaming has always been storage. Internal upgrades are overpriced and limited, but with 
an external Thunderbolt 5 solid state drive, you get cheaper storage, faster speeds, upgradeability, and the ability to run Mac and Windows games smoothly. If you are interested, then please make sure to check out the links below for the Acacia's enclosure, the Samsung drives, and more. And if you want to see more benchmarks and comparisons, I've got more Mac gaming videos coming soon. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.